Hey guys, chapter 5 of The Kebleon, The Mental Universe. The universe is mental, held in the mind of the all. The all is spirit, but what is spirit? The question cannot be answered, for the reason that its definition is practically that of the all, which cannot be explained or defined. Spirit is simply a name that men give to the highest conception of the infinite mind, it means the real essence. It means living mind as much superior to life and mind as we know them, as the latter are superior to mechanical energy and matter. Spirit transcends our understanding, and so we use the term merely that we think of or speak of the all. For the purposes of thought and understanding, we are justified in thinking of spirit as infinite living mind, or at the same time acknowledging that we cannot fully understand it. We must either do this or stop thinking of the matter at all. Let us now proceed to a consideration of the nature of the universe as a whole and in its parts. What is the universe? We have seen that there can be nothing outside of the all. Then is the universe the all? No, this cannot be because the universe seems to be made up of many. It is as it is constantly changing and in other ways, it does not measure up to the ideas that we are compelled to understand to accept regarding the all, as stated in our last lesson. If, then, if the universe be not the all, then it must be nothing. Such is the inevitable conclusion of the mind at the first thought. But this will not satisfy the question, for we are sensible of the existence of the universe. Then, if the universe is neither the all, nor nothing, what can it be? Let us examine the question. If the universe exists at all, or seems to exist, it must proceed in some way from the all. It must be a creation of the all. But as something can never come from nothing, from what could the all have created it? Some philosophers have answered this question by saying that the all created the universe from itself, that is, from the being and substance of the all. But this will not do, for the all cannot be subtracted from, nor divided as we have seen. And then again, if this would be so, would not each particle in the universe be aware of its being the all? The all could not lose its knowledge of itself, nor become an atom or blind force or lowly living thing. Some men indeed realizing that the all is indeed the all, also recognizing that they, the men existed, have jumped to the conclusion that they and the all were identical, and they have filled the air with shouts of, I am God. <laughs> to the amusements of the multitude of the sorrow of ages. The claims of the corpuscule that I am man would be modest in comparison. But what indeed is the universe, if it be not the all, not yet created by the all, having separated itself into fragments? What else can it be, or what else can it be made? This is the great question. Let us examine it carefully. We find here that the principle of correspondence, see lesson one, comes to our aid here. The old hermetic axiom, as above, so below, may be pressed into service at this point. Let us endeavor to get a glimpse of the workings on higher planes by examining those on our own. The principle of correspondence must apply to this as well as to other problems. Let us see. Oh, on his own plane of being, how does man create? Well, first, he may create by making something out of outside materials, but this will not do, for there are no materials outside of the all which it may create. Well then, secondly, man procreates or reproduces his kind by the process of begetting, which is self-multiplication accomplished by transferring a portion of his substance into his offspring. But this will not do because the all cannot transfer or subtract a portion of itself, nor can it reproduce or multiply itself in the first place that would be taking away. And in the second case, a multiplication or addition to the all, both thoughts being an absurdity, is there no third way in which man can create? Yes, there is. He creates mentally. And in doing so, he uses no outside materials, nor does he reproduce himself. And yet, the spirit pervades the mental creation. Following the principle of correspondence, we are justified in saying that the all creates the universal mentality, mentally in a manner akin to the process whereby man creates mental images. 
And here is the report of the reason tallies precisely with the report of the illumined as shown by their teachings and writings. Such are here, such are the teachings of the wise men and such are the teachings of Hermes. The all can create in no other way except mentally without either using material and there is none to use or else reproducing itself, which is also impossible. There is no escape from this conclusion of reason, which, as we have said, agrees with the highest teachings of the illumined. Just as you, student, may create a universe of your own mentality, so does the all create universes in its own mentality. But your universe is the mental creation of a finite mind, whereas the all is the creation of an infinite. The two are similar in kind, but infinitely different in degree. We shall examine more closely into the process of creation and manifestation as we proceed. But this is the point to fix in your minds at this stage. The universe and all it contains is a mental creation of the all. Verily indeed, all is mind. The all creates an infinite mind, countless universes, which exist for eons of time. And yet to the all, the creation, development, and decline of and death of a million universes is as the time of the twinkling of an eye. The infinite mind of the all is the womb of the universes. The principle of gender, see lesson one, and other lessons to follow, is manifested on all planes of life, material, mental, and spiritual. But as we have said before, gender does not mean sex. Sex is merely a manifestation of gender. Gender means relating to generation or creation, and whatever Whenever anything is generated or created on any plane, the principle of gender must be manifested. This is even true in the creation of the universe. Now, do not jump to the conclusion that we are teaching that there is a male and female god or creator. This idea is merely a distortion of the ancient teachings on the subject. The true teaching is that the all in itself is above gender, and as it is above every other law, including those of time and space. It is the law from which laws proceed and is not subject to them. But when the all manifests on the plane of generation or creation, then it acts according to the law of principle. For it is moving on a lower plane of being and constantly it manifests itself, the principle of gender and its masculine and feminine aspects on the mental plane, of course. And this idea may seem startling to some of you who hear it for the first time, but you all really passively accepted it in your everyday conceptions. You speak of fatherhood and God and motherhood and nature, of God and the divine father and nature and the universal mother, and thus have instinctively acknowledged the principle of gender in the universe. Is this not so? But the hermetic teaching does not imply a real duality. The all is one. The two aspects are merely aspects of manifestation. The teaching is that the masculine principle manifested by the all stands in a way apart from the actual mental creation of the universe. It projects its will forward, the feminine principle, which may be called nature, whereupon the latter begins an actual work of the evolution of the universe from simply centers of activity on to man and then on and on higher still, all according to well-established and firmly enforced laws of nature. If you prefer the old figures of thought, you may go with the thinking of masculine principle as God and father of the feminine principle as nature and the universal mother from whose womb all things have been born. But this is mere poetic figure of speech. It is an idea of the actual process of creation of the universe, but always remember that the all is but one and that in its infinite mind, the universe is generated, created and exists. It may help you to get the proper idea if you will simply apply the law of correspondence to yourself in your own mind. You know that part of you, which you call I, in a sense, stands apart and witness the creation of mental illnesses, or illnesses, images in your own mind. The part of your mind in which the mental generation is accomplished may be called me, in the distinction from I, which stands apart and witnesses and examines the thoughts, ideas, and images of the me. As above, so below. Remember the phenomena of one plane may be as employed to solve the riddles of the higher or lower planes. Is it any wonder that you, the child, feel the instinctive reference for the all, which feeling we call religion, in aspect the reverence for the father mind? Is it any wonder that you consider the works and wonders of nature 
that you are overcome with a mighty feeling which has its roots away down in your inmost being. It is the mother mind that you are pressing close up to, like a babe to the breast. Do not mistake the supposing of that the little world you see around you, the earth, which is a mere grain of dust in the universe, is the universe itself. There are millions upon millions of such worlds, and greater, and there are millions and millions of such universes in existence within the infinite mind of the all. And even in our own little solar system, there are regions and planes of life far higher than ours, and beings compared to which we earthbound mortals are as some slimy life forms that dwell in the ocean's bed when compared to man. There are beings with powers and attributes higher than man has ever dreamed of the gods possessing, and yet these beings were once as you, and still lower, And you will be as they, and still higher in time, for such is the destiny of man as reported by the illumined. And death is not real, not in the relative sense, but is birth to a new life. And you shall go on and on and on, to higher and still higher planes of life, for eons upon eons of time. The universe is your home, and you shall explore its farthest recesses before the end of time. You are dwelling in the infinite mind of the all, and your possibilities and opportunities are infinite, both in time and space. And at the end of the grand cycle of aeons, when the all shall draw back in itself, all of its creations, you will go gladly, for then you will be able to know the whole truth of the beginning at one with the all. Such is the report of the illumined, those who have advanced well along the path. And in the meantime, rest calm and serene, you are safe and protected by the infinite power of the father-mother mind. Within the father-mother mind, mortal children are at home. There is no one who is fatherless nor motherless in this universe or any other. And that's the end.